Thank you, Joseph. On behalf of the entire Halo team, it's my honor and privilege to announce that your Spartan journey begins today. Right now, you can download and start playing Season 1 of Halo Infinite's free-to-play multiplayer beta on Xbox One, Series S, X, and PC. This is the kickoff of our season, and you'll have access to all the maps, core modes, academy features, and the full battle pass to unlock. And your progression will carry over when we officially release the game on December 8th. This is an amazing moment for our team to get to celebrate this as we finally get to release the game and play with you all online. See you online, Spartans. Six months later. So, it's been six months since the multiplayer beta released in November, and Halo Infinite has had quite the launch with highs and lows, and I want to go over everything that made headlines from the release to where we are now with Season 2. Remember, like the video as it greatly helps the channel, and if you love Halo, throw a sub my way. We are so close to 10k, and that has been my goal for YouTube since I started. Let's get into it. Also, I won't cover the TV show or things like the Among Us crossover. We're just sticking to Halo Infinite. Halo Infinite's multiplayer released as a surprise on November 15th, 2021 during an announcement from Xbox during their 20th anniversary celebration. It wasn't a well-kept secret as it you know, was reported that the multiplayer would most likely be launching early for quite some time. While the gameplay was well-received and reviewed well, it quickly became apparent the shortcomings the game would endure. Lack of content, maps, modes, store prices, and more were brought to the forefront of changes the player base wanted. Some speculated when the campaign would be released on December 8th that more content would be added since the multiplayer launch was touted as just a beta. But no new content came. We were aware the first season would last around 6 months, which is an eternity for most games in their seasonal models, and with the lack of co-op or forge, the future was looking a little bleak for the time being. Campaign was released on December 8th and to high acclaim. Many reviews and critics praised it and IGN gave it a 9 out of 10. Right after the launch of the full campaign, we come to the Halo is Back party that was HCS Raleigh. The first day broke records in terms of viewership with Twitch viewer counts on all their streams reaching over 150,000 concurrent viewers. That doesn't include YouTube where they were also streaming the event. The tournament had over 200 teams, and by the end of the tournament, Cloud9 was crowned the champs. Across all platforms, the event had over 260,000 viewers. The hype and buzz around the game was amazing, but there was still discourse amongst the player base and the developers. Big Team Battle was literally unplayable after the campaign was released, and it took until January 19th to receive a patch that, turns out, also did not fix the issues. They would release a new patch on February 3rd, almost two months later, that would finally fix the issues for Big Team Battle. In my opinion, the player base greatly suffered from the lack of a larger, more social mode at that time. Throughout the first few months, we see multiple events ranging from the Fracture Event Tenrai, which focused around Fiesta challenges, to the Winter Contingency to Cyber Showdown. These events, while nice to have, actually caused more heartache from the community. The challenge system and event modes had been an issue since launch, and 343 was looking for ways to adjust and compromise with player complaints. Around this time in January, we got our first hint of another studio working on a new mode for Halo Infinite, something that was being compared to a Halo-styled Battle Royale mode was being worked on by Certain Affinity, and it was making headlines across the internet. This mode is said to be targeting Apex, Fortnite, and Warzone players, if the rumors are to be true. In January, Microsoft and 343 also confirmed that over 20 million players had played the game so far. In February, we also learned that EA blamed Halo for the failure of 2042. Later on in February, there were many, many, many articles devoted to the game's performance on Steam as well as Twitch viewership, and by February, the game had fallen outside the top 100 on Steam, outside the top 5 on Xbox, and was struggling to find more than 5,000 viewers on Twitch. HCS Anaheim also happened, but that was close to the public, and Cloud9 won again. In March, we received the news that co-op campaign would be delayed again and not launch with Season 2, which was announced to start on May 3rd. With the new season announcement, we learned that two new maps would be deployed, some modes would be returning, and new ones would be added, and fixes to the Battle Pass system. 
Forge is currently being privately flighted and worked on, and the hope is to launch it with Season 3 later in the year. April seemed to be the boiling point between 343 and the community, with one member of 343 saying, We understand the community is simply out of patience and frankly, I think, understandably tired of words. We just need some time for the team to get the details sorted, and then we can certainly share as much as we can. He also said that right now this focus is on Season 2, and we'll have more to share on that in the coming weeks. Meanwhile, a lot of production planning, costing, planning, hiring, and etc. is all happening, which doesn't really lend to detailed regular updates. This caused a lot of confusion amongst the player base. Why five months after launch is 343 still in the hiring phase? And this also came after multiple high profile employees had exited the studio after the launch of the game, including the multiplayer lead. HCS Kansas City happened at the end of April with Sentinels taking the top spot and viewership saw a bump on streaming channels as well. We now come to May and with it the launch of Season 2. As of the time of this script, we have had the last Spartan Standing event launch alongside the start of the season, two cinematics detailing some of the story for the season, and a lot of things promised for the future. First off, we got the new shiny game mode, Last Spartan Standing. This is a free-for-all gun game type of mode where you have six lives and fight to become, well, the Last Spartan Standing. A lot of people compare it to a Battle Royale. Me, not so much. The event takes place on the new BTB map, Breaker, and for all intents and purposes is a fairly fun mode and is actually my favorite BTB map now. We also received Catalyst, the new arena map that harkens back to the days of Halo 3. King of the Hill, although updated, also returns. Land Grab was added, and a playlist called Rumble Pit that features unique modes such as Vampire Ball, Ninja Slayer, and others was also added. Cross-core customization is looking to become a reality as well. Forge and Co-op are on the horizon, and we also have the new Fracture event coming soon. We have six months until Season 3 which I think will be a much larger update to the game in terms of content and quality, but as always, we just have to wait and see. We haven't heard anything about campaign DLC or the continuation of the story, but we are still a few months out from the Xbox Game Showcase event thing that has become their version of E3. That's going to do it for the video. If I missed something, please leave a comment down below. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe, leave a like, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.